Hello, and welcome to the Low Code Cafe, episode number 126 for February 1st, 2023. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about building a low code application, part one, and we'll be doing planning and entities. And uh, this, I think, will be an interesting series that we'll return back to from time to time over the next several weeks and months. Um, we'll, so today, we'll be doing the, uh, the, the planning part. But uh, before we get into that, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Dale Warner, Head of Support for Plant and App. I'm going to be joined today by Patrick Anderson, a t Technical Success Manager, and Tico DeWard as, uh, uh, from our marketing department and as our, uh, as our customer for this episode. This is an event we do every Wednesday, uh, or at least most Wednesday, Wednesdays at this hour. It's a weekly webinar that we put on for the community where we talk about updates, we do demonstrations, but the biggest piece of it is dedicated to hands-on low coding. Uh, we invite you to be your guest speaker. We've had a couple of those in January. If you have something that would be of value to the community or a, or a uh, system that you've completed and like to show off, we would love to host you. Our past editions are, are uh, posted on YouTube to live on forever. Um, you can get there with uh, youtube.com slash plant an app or use the QR code that uh, shows up there on the screen. Uh, and then once you find us, be sure to subscribe and hit the alarm bell so that you know when we post new content. Today, we're going to do a pretty straightforward agenda. We will, uh, I'll do a brief update on some hot fixes from the trenches of support, talk about some known issues that we have, and then we'll move on to our hands-on low-code development. Please interact with us. We have a chat window. We have questions and answers. Uh, you can raise your hand if you want to speak. And then at the very end, we have a feedback form. By the way, a big piece of today is going to be, the first 20 minutes or so is going to be a, a pre-recorded conversation, but do feel free to submit your uh, questions during that as it goes on, and then we'll address them. The entire panel is here to, uh, to address them. So when the video stops, we'll take those up. We have one small schedule change. See, I said we do it uh, every Wednesday, but we don't. Uh, next Wednesday, the Low Code Cafe will be closed. Uh, we are presenting, uh, there's, there's three different presentations that we're making in the DNN Summit, and uh, we encourage you to attend. There, there's some good information there, and uh, we encourage you also to watch your inbox for more information. Uh, there's, I think, a, uh, a special offer coming your way, but uh, do investigate DNN Summit. So with that, I'll get into my From the Trenches segment. Um, first thing we'll talk about is hot fixes. Our current version of Plant and App is version 1.24. We've released two hotfixes previously, and now we're releasing two more. Uh, neither of these are uh, probably uh, going to change your lives, but for the right, right person, they might be useful. So the first one is in Form Builder. We have impl implemented an improved autofocus. So if you use our barcode tools and you activate a barcode scanner on a form, um, we've improved what focus gets used. There were some barcodes that wouldn't scan just because of the library that we're using. So we've improved that. And so we're trying to be uh, better in the mobile world. And then uh, if you use our page builder theme, there was an issue where a detailed breadcrumb would uh, cause a, a simple issue. And I'll just, I'll point this one out. So on our, uh, if you had a an automatically generated page or even one, um, one that you um, uh, have built yourself and you have a detail page. When you click in on the detail, it leaves a breadcrumb. And if you were to click this breadcrumb before installing the update, it would end up redirecting to this page without a goal ID. So it ended up breaking the page. That's what it would look like to your, to your users. So we've just disactivated this, uh, being able to click on the same page for this detail page. Uh, so again, very small, um, very small issue that was uh, resolved. But if it applies to you, if either of those apply to you, you'll find them in the updates um, section of configuration menu. Um, there are there is a known issue about uh, in the area of DNN platform updates that I wanted to make you aware of. Um, 
and it has to do with DNN 9.11. DNN 9.11 is compatible with Planton app version 1.23 and forward, but it's not compatible with 1.22 and below. So you can you can continue to upgrade and, and use versions like 9.10.2, uh, and, and you don't have to go to not DNN 911, but if you want to go to 911, you really need to get to plant an app version 123 first. And, uh, you need to do that. Uh, you need to get to 123 first before, um, or installing 911, or at least do it in the same step. One thing that, uh, we've noticed is that, um, in some of our, if you're upgrading from much lower versions, um, our configuration updates may offer you the ability to get to DNN 911 even before it's uh, uh, even before version 123, and that's a path that is a mistake. We we uh, we're working on correcting that, but in the meantime, uh, you should not upgrade to DNN 911 until you get to version 1.23. Okay, so that's a known issue, and trying to save you a little bit of pain and me a, a support ticket. This is um, an uh, one of two events that we do, the low code cam uh, campfire is the second event. We do this on Fridays, this same hour. And uh, this is more of a meeting format and um, as compared to a, or the webinar format that we're doing today. And we uh, think it's um, you know really worth your hour to invest and learn about what others are doing in low code and then also get help for yourself in low code. We have um, some links for this episode, which I'll put on the chat in just a moment, but uh, you can register in advance for the low code campfire. You can do, um, you can get to our webinar recordings on YouTube. You can take advantage of the community portal, which is a great place to get questions answered by the community. Uh, if you have things that maybe stray outside a little bit of, of plant and app or want help from beyond just, uh, just our support department, you can use that. But there's also the ability to get to some live help sessions that we hold once or twice a week. Um, and then there's that webinar feedback form. So I'll put the, all those links on the chat here in just a minute. And uh, with that, we'll move on to the hands-on low coding. And if I could ask for a moment, if uh, Tico and Patrick, if you could join me, I just wanted to, uh, to introduce you briefly before we go on to play the, uh, the video that we recorded yesterday. So yes, good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good afternoon. Ah, yes, I'm sorry. I am so U.S. centric, uh, that, uh, and and it's it's a hard habit to to kick. I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, we will. Uh, we had a great conversation yesterday. We weren't sure that Tico was going to be able to join us for this session, so uh, we re we recorded it. But now he's live, so we'll take your questions after this uh, after this video plays. And then we'll continue on with uh, doing some live work uh, in the system. So um, the the premise here, and you guys jump in with with any additional comments, but the premise is that we're going to be doing a uh, to, to be considering a new plant an app project and automating it. So the, the kind of the the first steps are to get a good understanding of the business problem. And then we have to go on and do some analysis and planning before we even open up Plant an App and start doing the work. So that's kind of our premise, right? Is there any anything you would add on to that? Okay. I don't think so, no. So um, we the, the recording that we did was uh, talking about the business problem, and I think this is uh, well. You'll 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 uh, if you follow along, this is a very good presentation of a business problem. And uh, so let me see if I can get this video started. Yeah, absolutely. The 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 the, um, the SaaS owner. Mm -hmm. So in this segment of the Low Code Cafe, we're going to interview and talk about a, uh, a an application that needs to be built. And so this is kind of the customer, the process that you should think about in terms of how to, how to figure out what it is that you want to accomplish. And then we'll go on uh, from here to do um, the, the analysis and the planning. And in this case, we're recording it just for logistic, logistics purposes. Uh, Tico may or may not be able to be with us when we do this live. Great, so tell us what's going on and share your screen, please. Oh, yes. 
Thank you. Um, then I'll be sharing my screen. I've created a Miro um, to explain more about uh, business problem and how I look at it. Um, so this is about uh, a gym. So, um, I mean, many of us go to gym and uh, as we stated earlier, even more people have a subscription, but uh, rarely go. And um, what we always see is that we have a lot of nice people there uh, helping you to check in and uh, maybe even helping you uh, get motivated because uh, well, that might be a challenge for, uh, for some. So um, we, we have a great business there. Um, and I don't know if you know these, but we have this in the Netherlands a lot. This is paper, uh, this is being printed, and then there are exercises that you need to do and about uh, the weight and the repetitions and stuff like that. Um, and there's even more um, of these if you have a personal trainer. So there is not a lot uh, that's digital. So my challenge is to uh, make something for a gym because and I, I've uh, taken the Netherlands as my uh, as context because that's what I know that's where I'm from um, so I've laid out some of the things that could be improved in my opinion so uh, get rid of the paper um, I've seen many trainers thinking about well what are exercises that they didn't do yet and think of something new um, that's because, um, and that's if you're lucky. I mean, if you're not so lucky, it's the same exercise as previous week. Um, because there's not a lot of communication between the trainers, it's inconsistent, and you rarely have a logbook of how you're doing, how you're progressing. So um, I want everything to be digital. And I've written down some of the uh, requirements. So. This is a basic agile approach. So these are user stories, at least the start of it. So as a business owner, I want to be able to add or change with lead customers. And I want to be able to do a whole lot more things. If there are personal trainers, um, in the Netherlands there are a lot of freelance personal trainers and they just walk around in the gym and they actually use their uh, equipment to do their training. So there's not really an employee, but uh, some freelancer. Um, so these uh, personal trainers have some more uh, permissions than uh, customers, of course, because one personal trainer can have more customers, uh, but not as much permissions as the owner. Um, and of course, as a customer, you want to see your own personal plan and you want to be able to log your workouts, stuff like that. And just to make things even more interesting, I figured, well, maybe you want to check in um, with a QR code or barcode, and maybe I want to have a diet um, and have recipes. So quite a long backlog. Um, and because this is a mirror board, I also started drafting a bit how this uh, could work. So there is a screen where I can log in and after logging in, there are several options because the system will see if I'm the business owner or a customer or another role. So as the owner, of course, there's the logo, but I can see all my customers, employees, uh, trainers and personal plans. I can do everything. I even have a button that says finance. So I will be able to see invoices, subscriptions, stuff like that. So one more uh, deeper down to customers. If you click on that, I would really want uh, a grid listing of all my customers and search bar to easily find my customers. And of course, I need to be able to view them or edit. And if I view them, I get more details. And this is just a draft, of course. I mean, maybe the UX designer thinks a whole lot different about this. But if you select the John Smith, there is more about him. And you have tabs where you can see more about his goals, personal plans, stuff like that. And of course, edit, because uh, maybe he will be uh, moving next month. 
or have a different phone number. So these are all permissions that the owner is allowed to do. You can see the goals. You can see who the personal trainer, in this case is Dwayne Johnson. So he's up for a challenge. Um, and there's always good to have a bit of context why someone wants to do something. In this case, he was in a car accident and he needs to recover. And a personal plan, it has of course start date, end, uh, end date. And this would be the digital version of what we saw as the printed handouts. And if you click on one of these exercises, you should get an explanation, an explanation about the exercise and what you are expected to do. So how much weight do you need to press? How many repetitions? Stuff like that. So this is just one of the many uh, flows. Um, I will be uh, extending this, of course. And just to see why something is different, if you are a customer, well, I'll just put it together. You do not have access to customers or employees or stuff like that. It's just your own details and your goals and maybe some messages of your personal trainer. And of course, your exercises where you can log uh, what you did. Um, in finance, it should be your own subscription and whether you need to pay or not. Um, so that is um, a little bit about the wiring, uh, the uh, wireframe I created. Um, I also um, thought about uh, how this would look in tables, but um, that's not my expertise, but it may be helping about how I'm thinking out loud. Um, I think this is more your expertise. So this is what I was thinking about users and roles and subscription. Um, and I did this um, in italic because I can imagine that uh, it could be more than this. Uh, and it could be more different goals, stuff like that. So in a nutshell, this is what I think, what I had in mind. Um, and there's uh, two special things, uh, the dashboard, because as a business owner, you want to see how many customers you have and maybe if there are invoices overdue and uh, you want the invoicing to be automatic. And if you haven't paid your invoice in 30 days or something, then you should get a reminder also by automation. So um, that's all I have to say about that. Mm. So um, just a first impression, I, I think you've done a, 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 a very good job at defining a problem, right? A lot of people understand that they have a problem, but to actually take the time and start to split it into screens and, and potentially tables and fields, I think that's um, a really nice organized way to do that. What did you think, Patrick? Yes, I absolutely I agree. I think there's a there's a, a, a lot of detail in there, and uh, I think it's a really good starting point to uh, to begin uh, uh, developing an application. Thank you. So as you're going along, I thought of a couple of questions, and I think there, there'll be a. I mean, this this kind of opens up that next part of the discussion, right? Understanding, uh, doing some probing questions to make sure we understand where it is that you want to go and then um, helping you to think through other things that you might not have thought through yet. Um, and, and that helps define the scope of, of where we need to go as well. So one of those, um, one of those types of questions that I like to ask is, um, I always like to think of an application in terms of this is going to fit inside a box what's the next bigger box and to make sure we shouldn't be designing it for the bigger box. So for example, um, what you've laid out seems to support having one uh, facility. Have you thought about if the owner owns a chain of facilities? Well, actually I have thought about um, upscaling um, so I can add other enterprise or other gyms. Um, I mean, why stop with one company? If this were a SaaS solution, it could be 100 companies. It could be multiple countries. 
Absolutely. So you are thinking in in those terms, um, yeah. and so you know, it's. It, I just think it's helpful to to understand how big that you're thinking of, of doing because um, you, you want to make sure that you incorporate that thinking and don't at least don't paint yourself into a corner as you try to solve a small problem that you didn't consider the big problem. And then even if you don't solve the big problem right away, uh, you, you haven't closed the door on that. And then, you know, if the goal truly is to do the big SaaS solution, then designing it that way from the front, uh, you know, from the start uh, kind of sets you up for success. Yeah. So I need in the wireframe, I need another path uh, where it doesn't say owner, but uh, me taking over yeah. the world. Yeah, absolutely. The, 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 um, the SaaS owner, and then we might need to incorporate something about, um, you know, there's, there's ownership and then there's facilities below that. If somebody owns a chain or, a, uh, yeah. Just multiple locations. Yep. Because when you, yeah, multiple locations, there you go. That's a good way to, to talk about it. Um, because behind the scenes, this all turns into data and defining. Uh, I think we've said this many times in the Low Code Cafe, getting the data model right is the key to uh, getting the application right. Um, you can always expand, but it's it's better if you get the data right. For example, the um, lots of, uh, I mean, behind the scenes, the data is SQL. Oftentimes you build a SQL query to provide whatever result, whether it's the dashboard result or the um, a, a listing or something. And then when you add a level, then all your, your queries have to change. So if you build the complexity in the first place, then then you don't have to, you, you do the work once and not redo it as you go to each bigger size. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a nice warning because um, as, as I worked with Lantanet before, I know that you can change fields in entities, but I also realize that if you change that when you are already using the application, mm -hmm. things get more complicated. Uh, absolutely, and um, if you, if you, um, whatever you roll out as the first version, and, and once you actually have people using it, then it gets more complex in terms of having to having to migrate them so you the the time when you can move fastest and with the least amount of of uh, obstruction is when there's no significant data in the system and the time when it's hardest is when you have thousands of users and and uh, uh, people are going to be impacted and they're, they're going to see different screens and just dealing with changes of expectation as well as changes of data so I'll remember that by asking myself the question, what would Elon Musk do? So just to have a clear vision about how big can you go? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, Patrick, I, I always have the tendency to jump in. Did you have, did you see any initial questions that you wanted to ask? Uh, no, I, I mean, I have an idea that of, of a, some something that could be added, but I think it would be something we could, you know, do down the road. Um, but uh, I think an appointment um, system would be something that would be, uh, you know, for uh, scheduling appointments with trainers or if the uh, facility has classes. So I think uh, there's, there could be a scheduling component to this as well. Yeah. And, you know, that's kind of an interesting thing that, um, uh, for example, uh, along the way you talked about messages and the, the idea of being able to share messages back and forth. And, you know, that in itself is just a little subsystem um, and so, uh, you know, uh, breaking these things down into what things we want to uh, want to attack first, second, third, and what's part of a minimum viable product. Um, so that's a that's a great question. Do you um, do you see this as something that you that we want to get out as a minimum viable product, or we want to to try and uh, build the whole thing out uh, before? It, starts getting used at all. Do you have a client for this already? Yeah, I do have a client for this. And um, I'm afraid the answer is that um, it will need uh, the, 
pace like uh, customers and uh, fitness exercises, but it would also need the classes as uh, Patrick mentioned. Yeah, you know, it's a great one. I always forget about the Zumba and the aerobics <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah, but it's, it's really a fair point. If there was some level we can uh, take out of the minimal viable product, it would be the personal trainers uh, because they are, well, maybe in for free ride already. So uh, it would be an added bonus for them. And it would actually be also an added bonus for the fitness center because they could charge money monthly to the personal trainers to be on the app. But that would be just a business model, but it is not necessary for the minimal viable product. And, and then uh, as we start to define these things out a little bit, do you, um, I mean, are, do you have do you have a relationship with a fitness center that uh, maybe we can get real world answers to the questions, or are we designing this in a in a make believe kind of way? No, I uh, I have subscription uh, there as well. Mm -hmm. And um, just before you're going to say yes, I also go there sometimes. So uh, yeah, and uh, I know I know the owner, and I know uh, what she's doing, and he's uh, also willing to. Ask uh, to answer any questions. So, um, yeah. Great. Well, um, so I, it it looks to me like an excellent start. Probably, uh, um, I mean, I think just in terms of process, the next step is for us to investigate um, what um, what you've provided on that Miro board. And again, big kudos for for a nice organization there, because uh, you know. The projects come in all styles. Like they come from um, complete organization with with um, written specifications, and then they also come on the back of a cocktail napkin, right? So you you've got I think solidly in the middle there with a good definition. But uh, the next step is to um, for us to make sure that we understand where you want to go, and then to um, break into pieces and ask some questions about those pieces. What, yeah. what steps would you see, Patrick, be next? Yeah, I think that uh, we, we um, I think we have enough information to start looking at, uh, you know, the, the data model and, and uh, uh, figuring out the, the, the pieces that we have to put together here to. Good. Um, one more question from my end. Uh, I think in one week or a week and a half, uh, we'll be having an intern uh, on board who is specialized in UI UX design. Um, what would be a good uh, point uh, in time where I could uh, say, well, please uh, come visit us as well and uh, learn of, uh, of these guys who are creating data model. Would that be from the get go or some something further down the road? Hmm. So uh, now, now we're we're coming to my shortcomings. I'm I'm this black and white guy that doesn't care what the UI UX looks like, <laughs> uh, and and my and my projects reflect that, by the way. But um, uh, so maybe I'll I'll defer to Patrick. Do you have an answer on that one? Or in the part project is is good to bring that in. Yeah, I th I think it really depends. I think that uh, they. Getting the data model in place first is uh, uh, seems to me pretty crucial, and um, I'm you know it, it it would depend on how far we get with that. Given what we know too about Plant and App and the idea that when you build the entities, it builds a, a significant back end that uh, it may not be what what you end up publishing to the to these different people in these other roles. But it's a nice, nice maintenance screen, so we can kind of push the, I think, the UI UX discussion down the road a little bit. Uh, yeah. So probably, probably a combination answer. It's never too early to have to have the discussion, but it's probably becomes very significant when we actually start on the front end. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that also that also gives us the beginning point for the the front end functionality as well. So yeah, and I, I totally see what you what you're saying. So I mean the uh, default appearance is well absolutely uh, spot on for the business owner and when we are final uh, 
about uh, functionality, features, etc. We can focus on what we will we'll be showing to customers. Um, but again, the default is already pretty good. So uh, we'll uh, introduce them at a, at a later point in time. Good. So, you know, I think the next thing we one of the things that we bumped against today is the idea that um, I, I think locations weren't part of your original thinking and um, that next hire um, application owner or whatever we want to call that role wasn't part of the initial thinking. And um, I don't know. Classes and appointments. Sir? And classes and appointments. That, uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, if you, I mean, I, again, we're recording this in advance of, of the Low Code Cafe and we'll, we're going to play it as it is. But if between uh, now and then you have the opportunity to expand on that, that would be great. And we'll incorporate that into uh, our next segment. And if not, we'll go with what we have and what we, some assumptions and, and then uh, go from there. Again, we kind of see this as, as a, uh, a recurring series of the Low Code Cafe um, in, in the weeks to come. It's not going to be an every week thing, but uh, it's going to be a, an opportunity for us to take pieces of this and, and uh, build it out and uh, uh, help with an interesting project. So, good. All right. Um, so we look forward to uh, to showing you what we come up with and uh, maybe you'll be along with us as we do it. So good. And uh, we will uh, talk more at the, in the cafe. So in this segment of the Low Code Cafe, we're going to interview So in this no, segment stop, of the Low stop. Code Cafe. <laughs> Enough of him. Here we go. All right. So um, good. I, I, I thought that was a good discussion yesterday. Uh, and I think it, it did a good job of getting the problem out. So now it's just kind of where do we go from here? Where do we start? What, uh, uh, what can we get done? brought your Miro board up for us to work with um, and just taking a look at it. So a little deeper look at it, uh, users, roles, subscriptions, uh, goals. And then all the way over here to the right, we had um, company. And I don't yeah, know. I'm... I added that yesterday because we're going to take over the world. Yes, absolutely took over the world. Um, so, um, in terms of, in, in thinking about, um, how to move forward, I, I'm, I mean, you can go from the bottom up. I kind of like to start from the top down. So company feels like a good place to start. Um, one of the areas is roles and realizing that people are going to sign onto this system and have the different roles. That's kind of an easy one to get out of the way. So that's my, that might be something that we can uh, work on early. Um, uh, so, yeah. For a subscription, it's good to realize that if you're building a SaaS solution, that uh, it might be 50 kinds of subscriptions, right? I mean, for us, it might be logical to say monthly or yearly, but maybe there's someone else in the world who say, well, I have this summer uh, subscription or um, Easter subscription or whatever. So that mm -hmm. might be something uh, you want to offer as your customer to maintain that themselves. It's a bit the same like uh, their own classes. Not everyone will have Zumba, but they will have their own class. And and therein adds the complexity too, right? So if you have these uh, either monthly or yearly and, and two different ones, then your logic uh, when you get into sending and making sure that you collect for your subscriptions is, is a pretty straightforward, limited when to collect. Uh, and, and when you get into full variability, the more variability that you add, the more... Um, complexity the more complexity so the ability to call the right workflow or to figure out how to to route things when when that's the uh for, for you know you, you just have to build in a, a more flexible 
subscription engine. So uh, yeah, that, that sounds like one that's gonna require a, a, a little session of its own. Um, but at a at a basic level, it sounds like you're you're thinking along the lines of a uh, so this subscription that you have here would be the customer subscription, but you're thinking about a um, another subscription entity that describes different subscriptions that are available. So like a subscription type or something like that. That sounds yeah, like that sounds like, yeah, yeah, that's correct. For a minimal viable product, it's not necessary, but mm -hmm. if you're thinking further down the road then you would need something like that. Uh, and in the same way, you as the SaaS owner, the, uh, the co collecting from the companies that you, I mean, you might have to offer up some form of a subscription, probably want to call it something completely different to those companies if they're going to pay you on a month to month. And that, that, that can be a more simple, simplified model. Right, uh, where you either offer yearly or monthly to to uh, maintain their X number of locations, yeah. um, just collect from them automatically. So, lots of layers of complexity that we can get into. I was thinking that um, something that I maybe should be added here. I don't know, but um, based on your requirements, that a user be able to. Uh, check in. Um, it seems like that maybe there should be an, an attendance uh, entity. Yeah, whether he's in the building or not, or she. Mm -hmm. And just attendance records um, that actually show, uh, you know, a, a, a check in date. A history yeah. kind of a. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Nice. I suspect we'll find uh, several of those as we go along opportunities to do to go a little deeper. Um, so I'm going to suggest that we just pull up a, a plant an app and find a place to get started. So I have previous, previously authorized the fitness cafe. Um, this will be what we call our app moving forward. And it's just brought in as a default setup, meaning it's got our plant an app. Let's get started on the home page and it's got a configuration page and that's it. Um, so one of the things that, um, that I do when I'm starting a new app is that from a homepage perspective, this isn't going to add much value, uh, this, and, and it's really easy to remove. So putting the, uh, system into edit mode and deleting out this thing that's on the homepage that, uh, isn't necessary. Uh, so that'll kind of clean up and leave us an empty white page to put in a home page. Um, we have some uh, uh, some suggestions for you, Tico, to expand into periodic motivational messaging and goal reminder emails. So uh, apparently somebody has been to the gym. I haven't. <laughs> uh, well, too long. So. Um, yeah, keep those suggestions coming and, and Tico can record them into the into the application. Yeah, sure. So I've um, cleaned up that home page and then uh, as we go into the configuration page, we can start to, uh, one of the easiest things as I identified here a minute ago is to set up roles for customers and and personal trainers and employees and business owners. So um, it's just, you know, something that's just very easy to check off and say that we got started. So I thought I would jump in and do that. And I'm actually going to put this uh, on two screens so I don't have to bounce back and forth quite so much. Um, so here we go. If we go to um, the roles section. We can create a new role for these different ones. So, oh, let's not get too enthusiastic. <laughs> so we have a customer role. We have next one is a personal trainer role. Yeah. 
and someone uh, did a post about uh, locations and timing for classes. And I have thought about that. And my conclusion was that's quite a large topic appointments and calendars. And that's uh, might be a, a whole session about that. Okay, that's a good start for uh, for roles. Um, so again, I mentioned, you know, there's different ways to do it, but I'm thinking top down here. So um, we might have, uh, we might be able to jump into the company. So each different um, fitness center, um, Basically, a customer of the SaaS could would would have a company. Is that correct? Yeah, I, I could do marketing and have customers, and I'll add them to the application. Excuse me, I didn't catch that. Oh, that I would do marketing, and then if they become my customer, I'll just add them as a company and uh, give them permissions to do what they need to do. Great. So um, entities is the place where we define data. So we can do the first uh, first entity. We'll, uh, we can have that be the company. So um, namespaces we'll save for later. So we'll do um, singular and plural of this thing. And it actually uh, brings up, and now that I've gotten that far, I, I realize that I want to maybe start at a, at a slightly different spot. When we, uh, because this is going to create an entry screen that uh, we're going to put things into. And if we preview our site now, we see the home page. And because we're a developer user, we see the configuration page, but most people wouldn't see that. But I, I, I'm thinking that we will create a, a back office main menu item, and that way we can hang all of our um, entities that are really meant for just design purposes, and maybe they'll be maintenance screens, but we'll hang those in the back office. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. So um, we do this on the pages section. We can add a new page that is uh, called back office. And um, so back office maintenance. And then we get into who can see this page. Well, we are not going to give this to customers. They're never going to see this. But um, the employees of our system, our business owners, are going to be able to see it. Um, maybe the personal trainers, we can decide that at a later time. Um, and then certainly all of our developer roles, so low-code engineers, citizen developers. Um, we have a built-in role for managers, so we'll allow that, um, allow them to do it. And so that's who can see the page we're creating. And from a... Yes, sir. Because, um, because personal trainers can uh, see multiple customers. And later on, we will have customers in the tree uh, underneath the back office. And you might even argue that customers could see the tree as well because they can edit their own uh, street name, for instance. But uh, I'm sorry, we're. Uh, what I have in mind is to create a back end that users will never see. Okay. Uh, and that this is just for us to kind of imagine the data and work with it directly, maybe outside of any logic. We'll build a front end. So when people sign up to come to the gym, whether they create their own record or someone else creates it, uh, they'll be able to edit it and, and it will not be through our back end processes. Okay. That's kind of where I'm going. So, All right. sounds good. We'll stick with back end and then open up things later. Uh, but sure, we'll let personal trainers in uh, 
to things that are appropriate to them. Um, and then who can edit the pages? And this is more about a development thing. So we'll turn on turn on editing for our developer roles uh, and save the page. So just by going that far, if we were to refresh, we now have a back office menu item and it has a URL, uh, the fitness cafe slash back office, nothing on here yet. And so this, uh, this side step that I just did was kind of a necessary one so that when we work here with our customer, uh, or rather company entity, that we can have a place to put this new menu and this new um, form and listing. So we have company, companies plural, um, we do want to display this in the menu, but the place that we want to put it is in the back office maintenance page. And uh, so that will create it, but give it a, a, a pretty much hidden place. Um, as always, we get the system pro created properties um, created by and modified by and a unique identifier. But then you had identified that we have things like company name, um, I think we'll we'll save location as more of a, a mini to one. Do you, um, mm. I think that should probably be a separate table. Don't what do you think, Patrick? I do. I agree. I'm, I was thinking about that as well. That uh, you, um, any specific company might have multiple locations. So I think uh, if you think if you think in the way that you were talking about yesterday, Tico, I believe that it's a really good idea that we uh, consider the location as a possible uh, entity. So perhaps we split these out a little bit. Uh, the company name is going to be in the company record, uh, location, street, house, city, phone, those, uh, email are all going to be more location specific, right? Um, yeah. We are going to have to have an owner and bank account number probably when we say an owner, this would be the name. And now we're going to need his email and phone, his, their email and phone, uh, so that we can communicate with the owner. So this, we'll, we'll split this column into two company and location as we start to work. So, the, but the first one we will do, uh, very easy to do, company name. And uh, we're going to add that as a property. It's going to be text, so that's pretty straightforward. And then um, just right up front, we'll select that as the display name so that when it'll have a hyperlink on it and be able to be used to dig down into the details of a company. Uh, so the next thing we kind of move on into is the owner name. And... Um, perhaps owner email, which is an email address. Uh, so we select that and that'll help us with the formatting. Um, Would you uh, use for owner name uh, reference to user? Uh, very good question. We, we um, The user, uh, we, we could make it be a, uh, a reference to a user, absolutely. Um, and let's take a look at that. So users have all these things already associated with them. Oh, so smart. Yeah. If uh, if that makes sense to you, then um, you know I, I was kind of thinking of it as a special type of of user, but uh, we can we can roll that all into the same place. Yeah, I think so. I mean, the, the role makes a difference there. Um, but I think the business ha might have a different email than uh, the person. Uh, the, um... And the same goes for the phone. But the address will be the same, of course. Okay. So this is... Um... So owner, this is really, uh, this needs to become more of a user thing, right? So this, we're, we're saying not owner name, but uh, this, but business email is, is a correct property. Right? 
this email. Um, I'm going to drop this one and we'll come back to owner as we, because I think we'll probably want to define the user, um, figure out how we're going to handle users before we get into linking users to the, to a company. Um, but business phone, that's what you just said, right? And will the business have an uh, have a uh, bank account separate from the owner? Uh, yes, I think so. And it's maybe the most important field because that's where I'm going to send the invoice to. <laughs> um, so just kind of thinking about this, you're saying bank account number, is is it your, uh, um, do we really want to be uh, saving bank account numbers or are we just trying to find a way to express a way that we're going to collect money from them? Yeah, that, that's what needs to be done. You, you are more, I think you're more like uh, PayPal or something? Or, or yeah, or Stripe or whatever, or it, or, or if you're invoicing them, or I, I mean, a bank account number is going to be necessary if your idea is that you're going to just directly retrieve money from them. But I kind of suspect that you will that'll be something that will outsource to a service because of the security yeah. concerns that come into play. In the ideal world, uh, we can automatically coll uh, collect the money, like a subscription. Otherwise, we'll just put an invoice in their um, in the system, and they need to pay them themselves. Okay. Well, for the moment, why don't we stick with um, the characteristics? Um, we'll, we can worry about payment later, and maybe come back and, and add it in. Sure. Um, so. Um, I think we've determined. Um, um, do we do we want to have the uh, the company have its own address information separate from a user? So how to a mailing address for the company, for example. Yes, please. Okay, so um, we think two lines of address. Is that? Yeah. At least in the Netherlands, that's quite uh, necessary. Excuse me? Yeah, in the Netherlands, that is necessary, two lines. Because okay. you have house next to a boat and stuff like that. <laughs> and then uh, do we want to call it, I know in very US centric, it would be city and uh, city yeah. would be correct. Is that? Yeah, okay. sure. Postal code. And is there a country an equivalent of for in the United States it would be state? So what's the equivalent that you want to put in? Yeah, we can use US. or the generic the gen the generic term that we um you know are familiar with uh, is region. It, that tends to be okay. So are there any primitives for any of those? Not really. So these would all be text. Does that make sense? It does. All right. From a, and I think this, uh, we can stop there. And uh, if we deal with permissions, we can see what we've built and that'll bring us to a good stopping spot. So we're talking about, this is the, um, uh, the company entity. If we move on to permissions, now we get into who will have access to do to view a company information, and maybe um, we can argue that the business owner should be able to see everything, mm -hmm. to be able to add one, to be able to edit anything, and uh, to be able to um, Maybe we say they 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 can't delete. We'll we'll I don't know. 
let's let's let the business owner at his discretion be able to delete things. So uh, a question about that, uh, Dale. When because it looks like it can uh, business owner can edit. Did we? I think we lost you. Yeah, I think we lost you. Yeah. You come back. Uh, we'll we'll fix it. How you like? In the meantime, I think I think where he was going is he's saying it looks like the business center can edit um, other um, owners in the system is what he was going to say. So um, there was. A, um, that's a. Uh, okay, I was. Um, I was misreading. I was thinking the, this uh, being the SAS owner, but uh, we, that we might need a role separate for that. So um, very good point. We will make the business owner be able to view their own things, add their own things, um, and delete their own things. So business owner is the owner of the company, and we need to keep that yes. clear. Um, Will the employees be able to view the company record? I think so. Um, this gets into uh, some complexity in the SaaS world, right? Because they they won't own company, but they will be able to probably need to be able to see their own one. So uh, that's a um, we might have to deal with that in a. We might have to put more thought into this permission. Yes, I agree with that. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna punt it in the interest of time. We'll come back to that. Um, so, with all this, then let's save, and um, let the system generate its the beginning of our back end office uh, back office. So I'll refresh the screen, and now the back office has a company's menu that has been built with being able to do a new company and a listing of companies. So um, we can have we don't uh, we didn't require this so we can skip it. Um, we didn't require any of that. Um, and so we can just put in nothing more than a name and see that it works or we can start adding um, Okay, so um, it's a start. It's a start and we have uh, obviously much more to go and decisions to make along the way, but uh, I think the, the, um, the big takeaways today are that uh, thinking about your application in advance of opening it up is necessary. And then once you open it up, it brings up uh, and, and start developing, start adding entities, getting the data structure, right is an important piece getting the data right makes it possible to build the application right and and now we start struggling with well exactly what are we trying to do here in the data so it's that's the challenge um so with that i will say thank you for joining us in this episode of um what are, where are we in this episode of the uh low code cafe and uh, we will continue uh, this in the weeks to come. We hope you'll join us. Remember, we are off next week. So uh, please uh, see it, uh, investigate joining us at DNN Summit. Thanks all and see you then. <laughs>